I recently reviewed the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1. It was my first look at the KB Lake G processor. I thought its performance was really good. I liked its overall looks, but I didn't love its price tag. I thought it was a very expensive proposition starting at around $2,100 and going up from there. I also didn't love its lackluster battery life. But I wanted to look at another laptop running the KB Lake G. In comes the HP Spectre X360, the 15T model. I took delivery of it last week and I've been using it ever since. Hey everybody, this is Andrew and this is my unboxing and review of the HP Spectre X360 running the KB Lake G processor. Coming up. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. I have a lot of great things on the way to the studio. And don't forget to hit that notification icon. This way you'll be alerted every time I post new videos. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter to get all the latest updates. Now the first thing you're going to want to know about the new HP Spectre X360 15T running the KB Lake G processor is that it's a lot cheaper than its chief competition, the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1. This is around $1,500 or so, dollars. that comes in over $2,100, and that's a big price difference. Now packaging is premium as we've come to expect with the HP Spectre line. Opening the box, you're greeted by the full leather sleeve, just like previous versions. They include one here in the box. I think that's a really nice touch. Now they do give you a very robust charger. It's 150 watts. It'll need all that juice. We'll talk more about battery life and charging times later in this review. Now I opted for the HP Tilt Pen. This is an upgraded pen that has 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. Also charges via USB Type-C. They include that cable in the box. We'll talk more about how the pen performed on this device in just a little bit. Now the Spectre X360 is packaged separately. It's actually a really nice box as well with a gold bottom. And opening that up, you're greeted by setup instructions, which is right there on the top. And you get some other documentation, including your warranty. And once again, I went with the dark ash silver. I really like the way it looks. Very sleek looking, very elegant, and very premium. But one thing you'll notice, this is a little bit heavier as opposed to the one running with the NVIDIA GPU. But there's no doubt about it, the construction and fit and finish of this device is first rate. Now there are some design changes from the previous model. Most notably, they went with all gold metal hinges. It's a little bit more flashy in my opinion, and it actually looks pretty good. Now when it comes to the ports, I don't think you'll be disappointed with this KB Lake G model. First and foremost, on the right hand side, you have your volume rocker up and down, a fingerprint sensor, that's new, that's just like the 13 inch model we saw late last year, and you have two USB Thunderbolt 3 ports. Now there are Thunderbolt 3 that support four lanes, meaning you can connect to an external GPU if you so choose. And there's a full-size HDMI port to connect to a TV or a monitor. And by the way, those Thunderbolt 3 ports do support data charge and display out. And on the left-hand side, you have your charging port. That's the barrel pin connector. That's different than the KB Lake U version, which strictly uses USB-C. Although you can charge on this device with the USB-C, it just will take a little bit longer. You get a full-size USB 3.0, it's Type-A, and of course your power button. You get a 3.5mm headset jack, which worked flawlessly in my testing, no static, no interference. And look what we have here, a full-size SD card slot. Amen, brother. I cannot believe I'm actually seeing this, something we don't have on the MacBook Pros anymore. It's something that we definitely want to see on these premium high-end 15-inch laptops. And thanks to its 360 degree hinge, you can put it into the different modes, giving you a lot of versatility when it comes to this two-in-one. You could put it in tent mode, great for recipes in the kitchen, consuming media, Netflix, YouTube, listening to music, and the like. Stand mode, also great for consuming media and use with the pen. And of course, you could always flip it into tablet mode, great for use with the pen, although it is a heavy 15-inch device, so I wouldn't be using it for too long in that mode. And of course, laptop mode, that's my favorite, great for general purpose use. Now, unlike the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1, this goes with a more traditional keyboard layout. It's got 1.5 millimeters of key travel. I really like it. It feels comfortable to type on, and it is backlit, so making it great for use in a dimly lit environment. And for you number crunchers out there, you'll be happy to know that this year's version has a numeric keypad, making it great for when you need to crunch those numbers, especially your accountants and Excel spreadsheet people out there. 
Now this uses a Synaptics trackpad. It's okay, it's pretty responsive, although I would have preferred precision drivers that you'd find in other laptops. I'm a bigger fan of precision drivers, but you can do your two-finger scrolling and Windows 10 gestures work as advertised. Overall, I think it was pretty good. And just like the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1, this runs the Intel KB Lake G processor. It's the 8th generation Intel Core i7-8705G. It has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. You can start with 256 gigabytes all the way up to two terabytes as far as storage options are concerned. And it's the fast PCIe NVMe M2 SSD, so that's pretty good. The one terabyte is a $330 premium and the two terabyte option is a $730 premium, so it can get quite expensive. The good news is if you want to install your own SSD, you have that option as there is a slot that is accessible to the user and you can upgrade the RAM up to 32 gigabytes if you so choose, a really another great option as well. And there are some differences between this 2018 version and last year's 2017 version. Take a look. And it has the AMD Radeon RX Vega MGL graphics. It has four gigabytes of graphics memory and it's equivalent to say something between a GTX 1050 and a 1060. And that leads to pretty solid performance. And you know, as I tested with the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1, which also runs the same chipset, here you get some pretty good benchmarks as well. Check out some of these results. But you will notice that on some benchmarks, the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1 did slightly better. And that was evidenced when you play such games as GTA 5. As you can see here, 1920 by 1080 on my settings, the Spectre X360 got around 40 frames per second, whereas the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1 did better at 60 frames per second. That's very interesting. But even around 40 frames per second, that is certainly playable, so something to keep in mind. On Rise of the Tomb Raider at 1920 by 1080 on high settings, the Spectre X360 got around 38 frames per second, whereas the Dell XPS 15 2 one got around 46 frames per second. Again, this is also playable. And even under such heavy load, things stayed pretty cool, so the thermals were actually pretty good on this device. Only getting around 97 degrees Fahrenheit or 36.1 degrees Celsius on the bottom, slightly above the comfort threshold of 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The keyboard and touchpad all stayed cool. Now there are two fans inside to keep it cool and they will kick in under heavy load and you will notice them, although not too terrible, but you will definitely notice when they do go on. That's something to keep in mind as well. And while we're inside, you can see there are two RAM slots where you can put up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. I like to have that option and underneath that ribbon is your M2 SSD slot where you can put your own SSD. You don't need to pay that expensive premium when you buy it from HP. And the SSD they give you is Samsung's and it's a very good one. It's a PCIe NVMe and here's how it did on the Crystal Disk Mark test. Very good reads and writes. Now when it comes to the display, HP's once again done an outstanding job. It has a 4K UHD display. It has a resolution of 3840 by 2160. That's a 282 pixels per inch and it has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And it's a 15.6 inch display giving you plenty of screen real estate. And it has a bright display, it's 340 nits, which is above the 305 category average, although it was beat out by the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1 and the 15-inch Apple MacBook Pro, the leader in the category. And it has very deep blacks and very vibrant colors, and it covers the color gamut really well at 119% sRGB, above the category average of 114% sRGB. Now it has a 75% Adobe RGB, which is good, but not quite as good as the 100% Adobe RGB you get with the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1. This is an outstanding IPS panel with excellent viewing angles, and it has thin side bezels, making it look very attractive. Without a doubt, this is one of the premier displays you'll find on a Tune one here in 2018. Now, I elected to go with the HP Tilt Pen. It gives you 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity, and it forgoes quadruple-A batteries in favor of USB-C charging, something I'm definitely on board with. I like the fact that it has an eraser and Bluetooth functionality as well, akin to the new Surface Pen. And as you know, those quadruple-A batteries can be hard to find and can get very expensive over the long haul. So I'm all in favor of this USB-C charging. 
I thought the palm rejection worked well. I thought it had good pressure sensitivity. I thought the pen worked really well, especially the Adobe Tilt function. And I like the fact that you can sketch out your artwork or take some notes in a meeting or in a classroom. It handled it with a breeze. Overall, I think HP did a really good job of the pen implementation on this device. Let me know in the comment section below. Do you want to see a more in-depth look at the pen? I'll do a separate video if I get enough demand. Well, you heard all the good news so far. Are you ready for some bad news? Well, yeah, that's right. Just like the Dell XPS 15 Tune 1, this has a very underwhelming battery performance. It has an 84 watt hour battery, so it's a pretty robust battery. And under my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits, you got around five hours and 48 minutes, which is well below the category average of eight hours and 28 minutes. And it was beat out by others in this category. And as I stated earlier, you have a 150 watt charger. And the reason they went so large was because they wanted to give you some fast charging. And it was pretty fast at an hour and 45 minutes to get a full charge. That's pretty good. But again, you could also charge with the USB-C. It just won't be as fast. Now, when it comes to the sound, I thought it was pretty good. It sports four speakers total, two on the bottom towards the front and two above the keyboard below the display. And they're Bang & Olufsen branded and I thought they actually were pretty good and fill up a small room pretty well. Now, let's hear them in action. The 2 megapixel front facing camera is a Windows Hello camera, so that gives you two options when you use Windows Hello, the fingerprint sensor and this infrared camera. Now let's see the camera in action. So this is the front facing camera on the HP Spectre X360. This is the version running the KB Lake G processor. It's a 1080p 30 frames per second webcam. Let me know in the comment section below what you think I want to know. Is this something that you can use for Skype? I think it is. It's not the best I've ever seen, certainly not the worst, but when you want to do Skype or any kind of video conferencing, this can get the job done. Again, I want to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. The HP Spectre X360's elegant design, speedy CPU, and comfortable keyboard make it just as nice to look at as it is to use. Unfortunately, the short battery life leaves something to be desired. The Dell XPS 15 2-in-1 lasts a little bit longer on a charge and provides smoother gaming, but it costs a whopping $2,100 plus. That's about $600 more than this HP Spectre X360, and that's a big deal. But the Spectre X360's mix of style and power cannot be ignored, making it an excellent buy at around $1,500. I'm going to give the HP Spectre X360 running the KB Lake G processor an 87%, making it worth your money. So what do you think about the HP Spectre X360 KB Lake G version? I really like it, but I think the thing we need to talk about first is its price. It's $1,500. That's about $600 less than its chief competitor, the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1, but I think this at $1,500 is a better value. It's got similar but not quite as good performance as the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1. It didn't do well as the, on the battery life, although the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1 didn't do well either. This was even worse. But having said that, performance was good on that KB Lake G processor. And as I stated, you're looking at performance somewhere between a 1050 and a 1060 GTX from NVIDIA. So I think you're going to get pretty decent performance out of this, but you will be having to plug in. It does charge pretty fast, so that's good. They give you that 150 watt charger, so that certainly helps. What do you think of the HP Spectre X360 with this KB Lake G processor? Are you thinking of getting one? Have you gotten one? And if you did, how has it been working out for you? Are you considering this or the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1? Again, I like the Dell XPS 15 2-in-1, but I like the price of the HP Spectre X360 much better. $600 is a big difference. And I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you as we just passed another milestone on our channel, 5 million views. And I think that's a pretty significant number as I never imagined in my wildest dreams that we'd be getting to this point. We're about to hit 30,000 subscribers. The channel's growing. I know everybody's saying, well, why don't I have more subscribers? Don't worry, we're plugging away, we're working hard at it, and I'm seeing the growth. Nice, steady growth. It may be a little bit slow, but it's certainly steady, and we're, we're making that way towards 100,000 subscribers, and who knows from there. But again, I'm enjoying this journey, and I hope you're enjoying it with me, as I love bringing you these videos. So I just wanted to say, once again, thank you for supporting this channel.
So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.